and welcome especially to Esther and Aaron. Uh, Esther Harvitai is the Delaney Family Professor in the Communication Studies Department um, at Northwestern University. She's also a faculty associate at the Institute for Policy Research at Northwestern, um, where she leads the Web Use Project. And Aaron Shaw is also on the faculty of the Department of Communication Studies at Northwestern University, and both longtime Berkeley maniacs. And welcome. Cool. Thanks. Alan. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we are delighted to be here. Uh, Aaron and I were fellows here, both in residence, five years ago, and that's when we met, and that's when we started working together. And we had a paper published uh, last year on civic eng engagement and internet use among young adults. And this is our second written collaboration. And in the meantime, I'm delighted that Northwestern was able to snag Aaron. So now he's a colleague as well. And that's awesome, because I get to see him regularly. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to go back and forth with this project. Uh, this draws on work that I've been doing for quite a long time now on internet skills. And um, Aaron will start us off. Then I'll talk about data methods, some of the findings, and then he'll wrap it up. Thanks, Esther. And thanks, everyone, for coming today. Um, I'll try to talk loudly enough. It's it's really loud up here with the uh, with the overhead. So if you have a problem hearing, just raise your hand or something. Let us know. Um, so the starting point for this research is you know about understanding who edits and who contributes to Wikipedia. And so the logical question to start with then is why does that matter? Why do we care? Um, and there are lots of reasons I think. Um, and some of them you can see up here now. It's a really popular website. By a lot of measures, it's one of the five most popular websites on the whole internet. Um, and people go there for information about numerous topics, basically almost any topic. Um, it's a really popular, prominent search result. Um, and it's the largest free source of information. So a lot of people who might not have access to uh, you know, Harvard libraries or things like that to seek something out might look for it there. Um, and the other part of this is that you know, in addition to the billions of monthly page views that that sort of search traffic generates, is that it's an incredible repository of volunteer labor. So uh, the closest estimate, or the best estimate that I've seen, estimates about 41 million hours of volunteer labor have gone into creating Wikipedia. And if you stop to think about that, it's just unbelievable. It's huge compared to almost any other volunteer endeavor you can name. And so understanding what it is that brought that about, and who brought that about, and who didn't bring that about, um, is a really big question for research. So there's a big but here, though. Um, the big but is that there's a huge gender gap. And this has received a lot of uh, media attention. So you've probably read something about this. Um, the estimates that I prefer to use, in part because uh, Mako Hill, who's there in the back of the room, and I did some research on this as well, um, suggests that there's only about 16% of editors worldwide of Wikipedia are women. Um, and about 23% of US adult editors um, are women. And so there's been a lot of research that's tried to investigate this kind of question. And like I mentioned, lots of press coverage. And so it's a big, splashy topic. Um, but there's some interesting aspects to most of the existing work. Um, so far, and a lot of it, I want to emphasize, has been really excellent. A lot of it's been done by the Wikimedia Foundation um, or in collaboration with people who currently work at the Wikimedia Foundation. And a lot of what they've done looks for answers within the community of existing contributors um, or tries to recruit people for their studies through the Wikipedia website. Right? And so we'll get to some reasons why that might be an issue in a minute. Um, but the result is that a lot of this work has looked at the dynamics of existing participants within the system, right? or people who are, or the culture of the community among the people who already participate in it. And that leads to a big limitation in the research design, right? You can't really answer questions like this, right? Are women showing up to edit in the first place? Um, and if not, why not? Um, and the, present, the, the prevalent sort of research designs that people have used to look at this can't talk to these questions because they're not looking beyond the boundaries of the community in the first place. So what we're bringing to this is also a perspective, a lot of which comes out of work that Esther and her colleagues and collaborators, other colleagues and collaborators have done, um, which focuses on understanding the reasons and differences and why people participate online in a lot of different ways. Um, and some interesting differences here have come out across gender divisions and particularly across people's skills at using the internet. Um, and you'll hear a little bit more about some of the measures, the ways that Esther has developed to, to measure web use skills in a minute. But um, 
these measures have been developed over the course of over 10 years now, and, uh, and they're really valuable predictors of a lot of different kinds of behavior online. So what we're contributing here um, is really bringing this data on skills to the questions about the gender gap. So this is a good time to turn it over to Esther to uh, take good. it from here. Sorry. Okay, yeah, so um, I'll start talking about it here because this is a data set that I've been developing for several years now. And uh, we realized that this data set is actually really good for answering questions about the gender gap in Wikipedia contributions because First, uh, we have data on user skills, which again, literature has suggested that people's internet skills are predictors of all sorts of activities, so it may well be that it's related to Wikipedia contributions, so let's look at it empirically. Um, the other thing is that in this data set, we have data on non-editors or non-contributors, so we address that, uh, that kind of sampling of the dependent variable problem of projects where they only look at those who are already contributing. So we have data, sim data on the same questions and variables that we have for contributors, we also have for non-contributors. And also, uh, this data set that I'll tell you about um, represents data over time about the same people. And that's extremely unique in internet research if you're familiar with social science data sets on internet uses, that it's very rare that people are actually followed over time and we have data about the same people over time. So those are the strengths of the data set that we use here. So let me tell you a little bit about the data. Um, so we draw on data from an urban public university, so that's not Northwestern, so that, that's not, it's a university that I've never actually been affiliated with, nor has Aaron in any way other than to do this study. Um, I picked the university because it's very diverse um, in its student body, which is of interest to me. I'm a sociologist, well, so is Aaron, uh, and I'm interested in questions of so, uh, social inequality, so I wanted to be able to look at a group of people who are for diverse, there were also logistical reasons for choosing this uh, campus, which is that they have a required course that was willing to work with me in terms of accessing their students. Now, that might seem simple. You walked into a course, you collected data. It's not that simple. These were actually, this is a course that has 90 different sections, and um, so it's actually quite an elaborate study. Moreover, we did the data uh, using paper pencil surveys, and the reason is, um, all my work is interested in internet use and internet skills, it would be wrong to uh, do the data collection online because I would be biasing towards those who spend more time online, who have more privacy online to take surveys online, who have more skills to be able to navigate uh, questionnaires online. So this is a method that is very rarely applied anymore and is especially rarely applied to internet research, but uh, I think is still a very important method that we need to bring from prior uh, social science work to studies of the internet. Um, I should also note that while in the first wave, which was in 2009, we went into these 90 classrooms to collect data, in the subsequent years, we, we couldn't do that because we didn't know what classes people were taking and some had left the university. So in fact, we had um, information, we had people's mailing addresses. So we contacted them in postal mail, stuck to using paper pencil surveys, uh, in 2010 collected more data, and then 2012 collected yet more data. And our talk today mainly draws on data from wave three, uh, but also data from wave one as controls. And that's interesting because often a lot of, most of internet research, when it looks at the relationship of different variables, it does it on cross-sectional data, meaning the data were collected at the same point in time. But if you think that one might cause a difference in the other, if you're collecting the data at the same point in time, you don't really know if the cause is actually going in the other direction or if it's going in both directions or whatnot. So having data over time actually addresses that nicely. Um, okay, so uh, also just I stand by the quality of these data. Uh, one of the questions we ask that I welcome, I invite you to read, um, is to check if people are actually paying attention to taking the survey. And in the 2010 and 2012 surveys, we have yet another such attentive, what is called an attentiveness question. Um, and we pitch everyone who doesn't get both of these right, basically. So, and they're interspersed in the survey. So again, I think the data are quite high quality. We lose, first year we lost about four and a half percent and the 2012, we lost about three and a half percent of the people this way. Um, and again, it's all through postal mail, very expensive and, and uh, hard, but worth it in my opinion for the quality that it yields. 
Just a few words about the sample. Is it at all representative of people that age in the US? It is um, in many ways. Of course, these are people who at least started college. Um, so they're certainly more highly educated than many other Americans. But in terms of their graduate, graduation rate in four years, they're actually quite similar to gradu graduation year rates across the US. So in, in that sense, they're representative of that age group in, in that sense. Um, just a few words about the people. They're all young. Um, diversity and gender. Many are first generation college students. Um, as I mentioned, I worked with this community because of their diversity and that shows in their race and ethnicity as well. We also collected data on whether they're working currently just as a way to account for how much time they might have for different types of activities. So a, on the one hand, strength of this data set is that it has diversity in terms of things like socioeconomic status. On the other hand, I do want to remind you that, of course, we recognize that it is a particular population. So yes, they're all young adults. Um, the smiley is over Chicago because that's where the school is. Um, and of course, they're all, they at least in one year all attended the same school. Uh, they weren't already three years later, but so we do recognize that and want to remind you as we draw conclusions that those might not generalize to all populations. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about people's internet experiences in the sample. Um, these concern well, data from 2009, because we're controlling for prior experiences. Uh, we have information about how long people have been internet users, how many access locations they have to use the internet if they want to, which is called autonomy of use in the literature. We have data on frequency of use. Uh, and then we have this internet skills index, which I can talk about in more detail during Q&A. It's basically, uh, it asks people their level of understanding on 27 internet-related items, and then we create a, a scale. I have three academic publications about the development of this scale. Uh, the first time I developed it, it was based on a very elaborate study where I also had data on actual skill, and basically the point was to come up with a survey instrument that was most closely correlated with the actual skill measure. Um, of course, it can use uh, refinement and updating over time because it's an incredibly elaborate process that hasn't been done too much, but I encourage people to do it. Um, we also have some Wikipedia-specific measures. One is in 2009, we asked people about their confidence in editing Wikipedia. Um, so we have data on that. So this is very specific to Wikipedia. And then we also asked people, and this is relevant especially for 2012, whether, um, but retroactively asks whether the people have been assigned a task in school that has to do either with starting a new entry or editing an existing entry. So we thought that was very important to control for just to see how that might affect people's uh, contributions to Wikipedia, but also to see if you haven't had such assignment, what are the chances that you have contributed to Wikipedia. Okay, so let's see how much people are editing Wikipedia. Before we go there, though, let's make sure people are actually reading Wikipedia, which I think we all know they do, but you want this is a good check on the data set, right? Like, are, they, are people reporting that they're using Wikipedia? And indeed, 99% of respondents say that they have looked at Wikipedia. Not surprising, completely consistent with what we would assume. It's a good check, again, in terms of the data. Well, let's see now how much people are editing, which we partly as you can see, asked in terms of frequency because we wanted to see that nuance. It turns out it doesn't matter much because there's so little contributions going on that there's not much to do with breaking that down, actually. So I'll let you look at those numbers for a minute. And I decided to ask these different questions because people might think about editing and contributions in different ways. So I, I broke out fixing a mistake versus adding new material in case in people's minds editing might mean different things. So I wanted to be very concrete so people would really report if they're doing any of these things. And then I thought if the numbers are not that low, you could also try to see differences, but that's not quite happening. So we'll, we'll see that in the future. What we did, because contributions overall are not that huge, is we basically created a variable that just says, have you ever in any way contributed to Wikipedia? Um, which just over a quarter of 
the young adults had reported doing. If you exclude those who were assigned to do this for a class, then it's actually uh, a fifth. A fifth who've ever done any of this once, at least. So that's what we've got, which, you know, depending on how you think about it, could be encouraging, not, uh, but that's the overall figure. So what, what, uh, what I'll discuss next is breaking this down by certain variables that could be of interest. So obviously gender, uh, this is our focus today. Um, as you can see, men are just much more likely to report having contributed at all in any way, um, which is true both with respect to those who've been assigned it at school and not. Um, for each of these figures, I'll have those uh, broken out just to show you the figures if you're interested. We also look at racial ethnic differences. Um, and here it's interesting to note that it seems like um, having assignment in school related to this does level the playing field a little bit. Um, so if you look at those excluding school assignment, whites are actually statistically significantly more likely to have done it. But once you, but if uh, you look at everyone, including those who were assigned it in school, there are actually no racial ethnic differences in the data set. So that's interesting. Um, and a similar finding for our proxy for socioeconomic status, which is parental education. So you can see that having the assignment in school really does level the playing field across socioeconomic status levels. So that's encouraging in terms of potential interventions. How about uh, things related to internet use? So people who three years prior were more frequent users of the internet, not shockingly, are more likely to be contributing to Wikipedia. Also, absolutely not shockingly, people who are more confident in contributing to Wikipedia are more likely to contribute three years later, understandable. Um, and then you can see that of all the, the graphs I've shown you, the largest difference is actually here in these general internet skills, not specific to Wikipedia at all, uh, that those who score the highest on internet skills are very significantly more likely to have contributed to Wikipedia. And again, there's a three year lag. So this is your internet skill in 2009, how it's relating to whether you're editing three years later. So these are bivariate relationships of, vari of these factors. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Aaron to talk to you about the more elaborate statistical analyses where we try to tease out of all these things, what is really going on? Right. So, uh, so we put all of those together. So the bivariate relationships are basically if you've got a survey and you just see what proportion of men and women did something, right? Whether they edited Wikipedia. So for this one, we put all of them together. Um, and these are all of the variables that go into a regression model um, that we ran. So again, the variable that we're looking to understand, the, the, the outcome that we're interested in understanding are these, did you ever contribute to Wikipedia in any way by 2012, right, for all the respondents in the study. And then we're including all these other measures, um, including, you can see the top half is sort of more the, the background, demographic, socioeconomic attributes. Um, and then the bottom chunk are, are those measures that we've got that are related to online participation, online behavior, skills, confidence in Wikipedia editing, things like that. Um, and so what we get out of this at the end is a sense of controlling for the variation in each of these different measures, which ones have a strong association with the outcome, in this case, editing Wikipedia ever by 2012. And what we find when we do that um, are that really three things are the only things that come out as significant, as statistically significant, right? So we've got gender, skills, and whether or not you were assigned to edit Wikipedia in a school assignment. And uh, it's just interesting to note that, you know, we include a lot of these other things because they come out as significant <laughs> differences when you just look at the cross tabs, right? So those, those figures that Esther just showed you, there's, those are meaningful differences within the data. But when we put them in the regression model, and control for the variation across everything, gender skills and the school assignment to edit are the only ones that are meaningful predictors. So that's part of what we want to underscore here. Um, and the fact that some of these other variables are really important findings from previous research um, suggests that they should predict this kind of behavior as well. But in, in, this, uh, in this data set, they do not. Um, so to understand this a little bit more deeply as well, what we did was we generated a figure to sort of show you what our model would predict, right? Um, so it's important to emphasize, before I show you the figure, I want to emphasize a couple things about this. One is that this is not, this figure doesn't reflect, is not actually 
the data that we observe, right? These are the predictions that we generate on the basis of the data. Um, and the second thing is that what we're really looking at here is trying to understand whether there's something that in statistics you talk about as an interaction effect, whether there's, an in, there's a relationship between the predictors that we're interested in, in this case gender and skills, and the outcome, right? And whether that relationship between those two sort of works in tandem in some way. So it might be that your likelihood of editing Wikipedia could become greater or less depending on where you are in the skills variable and the gender variable at the same time. And here's what we find on that front. So uh, just to break this down a little bit, you can see the, if you can see the colors, the light purple um, represents the female respondents to the survey and the green represents the male respondents. And the two lines are showing you across the x-axis, which is the skills variable, right? It goes from one to five. Um, depending on where you are on that, how likely you are to have edited Wikipedia by 2012 along the y-axis, right? So that's what those values are. Um, so that goes from zero likelihood to 100% likelihood, or zero to one in this case. Um, and the, what you can see with the two lines is that as you move out along the skills variable, the women in the sample remain relatively unlikely to edit. Um, the males in the sample start at about the same place as the women, which is interesting, um, but then become increasingly more likely over the course of the distribution of skills to be editors. So that by the time you're out at the high end of the sample, males are over 50% likely to edit and females are still below 30%. So that's part of the big story here. The other thing that's really worth noting are these little tick marks along the axes, right, at the top and the bottom. So the little tick marks on the bottom represent the actual distribution of female respondents to the survey's skills. And what you can see there is that they're clustered, they're centered right around three, right, right around the middle of the scale. The male respondents, they're distributed a little more widely. They start a little bit higher and they go all the way up to, they go, they go closer to five, right? Um, they go all the way up to five. And they're centered a little bit higher. They're centered somewhere, it's a little hard to see here, but somewhere in the high threes, closer to four, right? So women are less likely to have high skills in this sample. And unless they're, and even when they're at high skill ranges, they're less likely to edit Wikipedia than equivalently skilled men. I'm going to interject, interject for one second, because um, this is where I anticipate a question that I get almost every time I talk about skills and gender, uh, which is a very complicated relationship, by the way, um, which is, well, does my skill measure measure actual skill, or is it self-perceived skills, that it's really a self-report measure, et cetera, and I get that. But take note of this graph, right? Whether it's, it's self-perceived or whether it's actual, however good or not that proxy is, and I do stand by it, but obviously it's not an exact correlate. The point is that it matters, right? Whatever it's measuring in terms of that skill, whether it's just in your head, it matters. So we need to keep that in mind. It might have implications for what the right interventions are, but this is just really important to keep in mind as we talk about skills later. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, that's no, a great addition. Um, so we can go back to the graph during the Q&A if you like. But uh, for now, let's focus on what we think the big takeaways are from this. And uh, we've got a few here. So the first one is that you know this gender gap not surprisingly matters. And it, but what we find here that's new is that it really matters among the higher skilled users, the higher skill, the people with higher levels of internet skills. And that's something that hasn't been found or talked about in previous work on this topic. Um, the second thing is that skills really matter, right? And this really hasn't been studied in the context of Wikipedia contribution, um, but comes out of a long line of work on other forms of online participation. And what we see that's really unique here is that people with low skills just don't contribute to Wikipedia, right? They're, I mean, statistically speaking, they're all very unlikely to contribute to Wikipedia. Finally, and this goes back to the fact that this data was gathered over three years within the same people. Um, internet skills in 2009 are what we're using to predict this behavior by 2012. So again, these skills are having long-term effects in terms of what behaviors people engage in over the next, you know, the, the, the time that they're in college, basically. Or not. Or not in college, right? The, the, the time that they, from when they started college to three years later. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, and it's worth being careful about this because it's, it's just sort of bad stats if you're trying to interpret non-results in your study. 
but uh, it's worth noting some of the things that don't seem to matter in this data set, um, which do matter a lot in other research and really merits further follow-up, which are these things like race and ethnicity and socioeconomic status and other kinds of internet experiences and confidence in editing Wikipedia. Right? These are, it's, it, you know, we don't know why the data doesn't give us insights into that, but these are not predictors of who actually edits Wikipedia three years later. It's just skills and gender and whether or not you were assigned to do so. So we'll just wrap up with a couple of questions for future research. I think there are a lot, but I think the clearest ones to us are these here. So why aren't skilled women more likely to contribute? Right? And this is sort of, it's a, it's a slight elaboration on the usual gender gap question. So it's not just women aren't likely to contribute, but it's skilled women. There are lots of women out there who have high levels of internet skills, and lots of women in this sample who have high level internet skills. Um, but why aren't they editing? Um, and second of all, how can Wikipedia, which is meant to be the world's largest free knowledge resource and is meant to be editable by anyone, what can Wikipedia do to address these barriers to entry for low-skilled internet users? Right? Not just men, not just women. Low-skilled internet users in general are a huge proportion of the population. And from what we're seeing, it doesn't look like they're likely to be contributing to Wikipedia at all. So uh, just to wrap up, a big thank you to the folks who have supported this research and to the students and former students who have uh, mostly done a lot of the hard work on gathering and analyzing and putting together the data set and that's data entry, data entry um, as part of the web use project. Um, and thanks to all of you for paying attention. And we're really excited to hear what you think and talk about it more. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, whether how much you looked at like different kinds of contributions to Wikipedia, because like for instance, you know I would be curious to know whether like adding completely new content is different from like like reverting changes that other people have made or like correcting mistakes that other people have made. So I'd be curious to know whether uh, you know that like like the the predictions would hold for all different kinds of. Uh, interactions on Wikipedia. I can take it. Um, so we looked at just basic, um, just bivariates for that. I'm pretty sure we did not run the numbers. We didn't the run regressions. Models for that. Yeah, we did r look at bivariate for gender. It seemed like men were. I thought men were more likely to do the new edits uh, or the new additions. Um, Otherwise, we did not run the models because the, the variation is so small. There's just so few people for any one of these that report doing it, especially for starting a new entry, that it's very hard to find. It's very hard to have findings when you have almost no variation in the outcome. The yeah, problem. in some ways, that's so a limitation of yeah. doing regression-based methods with this kind of a question. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, right, it's only 20% of oh. folks who were not assigned to do so in a class that edited in any way, right? So it's just, it's a small we proportion the, of the population. Yeah, that's been there if you want to go back. Figure of just how, what, I don't know if anyone remembers the figures for new entries, but. Yeah, I mean, there's been some other work, uh, you know, maybe we can dig it up later. There's been some other work looking at patterns and who does what on Wikipedia um, that's dug more deeply into people who do participate and how those variations break down. And I think in particular, um, there's some folks at Minnesota in the, in the um, group lens lab that have done a lot of work on that. And then um, Judd Anton and Coy Cheshire have also done some work on that. So I can find those if you're interested. But that's. But yeah, you have less than 9% who are yeah, actually starting new entries. Yeah, yeah. So that's just hard for regression. So we've got two hands over here. Maybe let's uh, let's go here and then here. And then, yeah. Let me run into the same problem. Do you have any evidence about whether people who were assigned to edit Wikipedia, do they ever go back? So retention of people who yeah, are so assigned to do it. Assigned to edit is that the only time? It, or? We don't just that's just not the way we have the data. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that's that. like the the focus of the work that's looked more at once people are contributors, what happens and what brings them back and what keeps them there. Um, yeah, again, there's a lot of interesting work on that topic, and I think uh, if you if you want to follow up with that afterwards, I would def I definitely have some ideas about that, and Mako may have some ideas too. Um, but the uh, that's not the focus of this study, because what we're really trying to look at is what gets people to show up in the first place, right? So yeah, so maybe let's go here. And, yeah. so what sorts of classes assign edit Wikipedia? Sorry. Mine do. Um, no, that's <laughs> a, yeah. But is it within the discipline? Is it a writing class? Does that make a difference? We have no idea. I don't have data on the distribution of which ones do. There are lots of classes now that have started doing this. Um, 
and across lots of disciplinary boundaries and topics, it's become a thing. Um, and in fact, the Wikimedia Foundation has some programs to support that and some outreach to support that. So it's an active area that they're trying to develop to try to get people exposed to and participating in Wikipedia. So I, 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 I'm sorry, before, so if you want to follow up, I, I, I go ahead. Yeah, and then yeah, I want to quick answer to that. The answer is, that, I mean, it's in a bunch of places, but as, as Aaron mentioned, the, found, the Wikimedia Foundation supports a bunch of this. They had a really big push on public policy and working with public policy initiatives like, like universities and creating course material and working with that. Um, and to help answer that question, to go to the question before, um, the, they have a Wikimetrics program Program, the entire point of which is to sort of keep track of people who create accounts as part of courses and edit-a-thons and other sort of interventions and to track things like retention and future ed editing behavior for those people. So there's a whole bunch of, um, I mean, this is part of the Wikimedia Foundation trying to evaluate the effectiveness of their own uh, sort of like programs. Um, but that, uh, but the infrastructure is available for other people and there's actually a growing <laughs> amount of data that helps address exactly those questions. Mm -hmm. I do want to add, though, since you missed the data collection portion, that the person who asked that question missed the data collection portion. So this was a specific group, so I can't say on this campus what classes required editing. Sure. Um, the general point I wanted to make that I forgot to say during the talk was that um, I should know that this study wasn't about Wikipedia uses, right? So this is a much larger study that asks hundreds of questions about lots of different things with respect to internet use, but also outcomes and other things in people's lives and all sorts of correlates. So this wasn't focused on Wikipedia, which limits what we can answer in terms of Wikipedia questions, but I think is a strength of the data in, this, in the sense that people weren't primed to be thinking about Wikipedia uses any, in a particular way. In fact, almost all of the variables that you look at here were interspersed across the survey in different places. Mm -hmm. Go ahead of user-generated content or content yes. creation and have you analyzed how that compares so is wikipedia particularly gender biased compared to other forms of online yes. creation well, i can take that um i have published on that i have a piece target time will echo 2008 that looks at actually that's a different cohort but 2007 data on all sorts of arts related um content where there is there is a gender difference but there actually, once we control for skill, the gender difference goes away, which was interesting. Um, and then more recently, for these same data sets, uh, all sorts of contribution uh, questions related to voting on content quality and contributing reviews and lots of questions. And yes, there is almost always a gender variation that women almost always contribute less to those activities. Um, Yes, the gender does seem to hold up even after we control for skill, but skill itself is always significant in all these cases. You've had your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that I understood correctly. Were you saying that socioeconomic status did not correlate with um, internet skills by gender? Uh, okay, so generally speaking in these data, SES actually does tend to correlate with skill as an outcome. What we were saying here was that, that socioeconomic status does not predict Wikipedia contribution once we control for skill. So if you take someone of a certain socioeconomic status, no, if you take people of different socioeconomic status but control for skill, that does not affect Wikipedia contribution, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Now, the reason I bring that up is this is a topic of debate, as you probably well know, in the gender equality information society indicators area. And then a number of writers take the position that there really is not a gender gap, a gender digital divide, if you control for income and education. So well, that's not that's not the case. Yeah. I've done a lot of research that shows that you could control for SES and there's still a gender effect on skill. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have lots of evidence of that. And I'm not the only one. Other people have shown that too. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I would add too is I think it's important to emphasize that when we talk about a gender gap, <coughs> it's often to uh, kind of euphemize 
the fact that women are contributing less. Um, and across different kinds of online behavior, that's not the case, right? So it's important to keep in perspective that, you know, when we're talking about different kinds of user-generated content and cultural production online, or when we're talking about Wikipedia editing, we might be talking about a situation where once you control for all the other variation, there's still this gender gap where women are contributing less than men, um, or less likely to contribute. Um, but in other kinds of online behavior, the gap can switch, right? So some of this is just about thinking of it in terms of differentiated use and understanding what, differenti what those differences are. Um, and that in this case, at least, I think the case that we're trying to make is that with Wikipedia, if you're talking about something that's supposed to be a you know, widely accessible, widely contributed to knowledge resource, if you're effectively missing the perspective of a huge portion of the population in a way that's systematically different, um, that that's why in this case the gap is, and the way the gap is oriented is worrisome. Right, so that's part of the. But I will say, just yeah. uh, because I, I mean, I'm really familiar with this data yeah. set, obviously, um, and back to this question of other types of creation. So, uh, again, reviewing, voting on content, men do report doing more of that. Uh, and then when I would present that work, I've presented that work lots of times on the 2009 data, people would say, oh, but you didn't ask about fan fiction. That's where women are. So then in 2010, I asked about fan fiction, and men were still reporting even doing that more. So um, is there some methodological issue? I don't, so while I can definitely have a long conversation, as there's lots of literature showing that in terms of skill reports, there is gender bias going on, and that's very complicated. I don't quite see why there's a reason for men versus women to misreport what they've actually done in terms of contributions on this kind of a survey. So I do, I'm confident in, in those measures. Um, but if people have thoughts on why those measures would be biased, I'm certainly eager to hear. You had your hand up. Yeah, so just about your, um, the, the point you made there about the sort of dangers of these differences actually made me think about like, what, what do we know about how men and women contribute differently? Like what, like, what is the counterfactual? What would a more female balanced Wikipedia look like? Like what, in what ways is Wikipedia, do, how much do we know about the ways in which Wikipedia is biased because of the gender imbalance in it? Uh, the content. The content content itself. So like, wait, I mean, wait. so what I'm aware of at this point is that there have been some studies of topic coverage um, that suggests that topics that are disproportionately interesting to women uh, <coughs> have are likely to be less covered. Um, I don't know if there's been a lot of really systematic work to try to dig this up, in part because it's hard to figure out once people are editing Wikipedia, it's hard to figure out their gender. Um, and, uh, and the surveys that have been run of Wikipedia contributors have had some design issues that sort of compound these issues. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there's a, there's other interesting work that I would point to on that question, which goes into where there are areas of, um, you know, one body of work I can think of is stuff on a, on um, actually hardware hacking. And there's a system called LilyPad that was really developed by uh, Leah Buckley over at MIT um, that managed to recruit more women to participate in hardware hacking than men with this one particular platform that she helped develop. Um, and so looking at those spaces that are dominated by women, I think points to possible lines of inquiry, but I think this is an open area for work, right? Is what kinds of online content creation um, or participation do women participate in more, right? And and maybe the short answer is when you control for skill and things like that, it might be that, that the gender difference is not meaningful. Um, but that's, you know, there's a lot of work to be done there, I think, in understanding more deeply what that would look like. So, yeah. Maybe let's go back here and then over to you. I, I can just add to that. Um, my colleague who also runs the, the school workshop with me, Tina Eckert, has written an article about the content that women produce on Wikipedia when they do contribute. And it's unfortunately biased towards, you know, once women do edit, they, they write about feminism, gender topics. It's very centered on, like, uh, you know, issues specific to women and feminism, so it still doesn't address that, you know, in general topics like, you know, World War II or whatever, uh, there are still almost no women voices at all, so that's kind of combination. Just a quick question. Um, have you or anyone else looked at um, other cohorts that are in like, different age groups, different parts of the country, different parts of the world? Um, at this study that you've done seems fascinating, <clears throat> but I also you know, know that it's very specific as far as, you know, college kids from a certain place and 
Yeah, so first, it's, uh, just to clarify, it's not college kids anymore okay. um, because several dropped out right. and they're okay. growing up. Sure. And um, So actually, by now, half of them are not college kids. But yes, they're young adults, Americans in a certain location. Um, I wish they'd had. I would love to be able to analyze data that are more representative. It's just those, those three factors that I mentioned that make this data set very unique. The fact that we don't just look at those who are contributors, the fact that we have data on skill, and the fact that we have data over time makes this data set extremely unique. Um, and so, other, I mean, I wish there would be funds to collect nationally representative data on things like this. I would love to do that, or I would love to see people do that. I don't know of any such data set. Yeah, nothing that goes in as deep on the skill and use and internet use and skill. And, and panel data. So. I mean, there's yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely not panel stuff. Um, it's very hard to find. Any other questions? Yeah? Um, have you been following the, the discussion in the, in the media, especially the New York Times, about women not being welcome on the internet? And do you think that this has a sort of general cultural impact uh, that could be discouraging for, for women? I mean, the conversation is all about what kind of response women get when they actually write about topics that are related to the internet and, you know, that. Women will get, if they're being insulted, they'll be insulted by some remarks about their bodies and their looks and whatever. You know, men will get insults, but women will get very sort of personal types of things. And that there's a sort of general cultural feeling that the internet is a space, a public space, where it's not really safe for, for women to come out in a high profile way. So I know this is not relevant to edited so I actually think it is potentially relevant. The problem is, and anecdotally, I completely agree that there seems to be something going on there. How you measure that through survey data is not clear. I've tried. I've tried to come up with questions that would get at things like mean comments or mean things like that discourage you. Or, or I've actually tried asking things like that. And I mean, I have asked things like that. And I haven't been able to show that they matter to outcomes. So I don't know if the, it, it may just be that the measures are bad or that systematically we're not finding that. So I, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know of quantitative work that has looked at that. Anecdotally, again, I completely see where that's coming from. I think there is something there. Um, and I don't know of in-depth, like really rigorous qualitative work either. I don't know if others out there yeah, yeah, know I mean, such work. <coughs> I don't know, I would sort of... I'd, like systematic work. Yeah, I would answer it two ways. I guess I would say that there is really interesting work within... I mean, some of the other work that I alluded to at, earlier in the, in the talk when we were sort of saying that there's other work on understanding why people who show up, why women who show up to edit Wikipedia might get discouraged and leave. Um, there's been some, some work looking at that. And I think the thing that I take away from a lot of that that does seem systematic is that... Um, you know, I, I, like Esther, I haven't seen a lot that sort of ties that, those experiences to differences in outcomes, right, in a, quanti in a quantitative way. But I think a lot of people share that perception, and a lot of women who contribute online share that perception. And I think, you know, as someone who would like to see that trend reversed, I worry about it and would love to see more work into it. Um, and I think, uh, you know, sort of taking off the, like, <coughs> kind of the details of this study kind of piece of my brain, right? I think that this is a really big problem. And I think that whether, you know, anecdotally talking to a lot of people, I think that is a that is a very common experience and or perception. And so, um, you know, I think there needs to be a lot more research into understanding, you know, systematically what kind of experiences are happening across the board and what kinds of outcomes that produces. Um, and starting to think about, you know, I think within the Wikimedia Foundation in particular, so bring it back to this topic right there, they have worked on developing some tools and some systems to create sort of more support, supportive cultural environment within the encyclopedia to welcome newcomers, to hook newcomers up with mentors who can help train them to understand how to edit, um, and particularly focusing on building an environment that is, you know, changing, you know, turning away from a sort of more aggressive, kind of uh, cultural dynamic to one that's more mutually supportive and based around conversation. And part of that is because they've, in surveys, found that women who contribute feel that the culture of the community is not that way. 
right? So they're trying and experimenting with different tools to do this. Um, and I think it's still a little early to know if it's what kind of long-term impact that could produce, but I think it's a really key area for future tool development and research and yeah, investigation. So. Good. I was wondering about your choice of words, aggressive and supportive. Um, and I'm wondering if you, if it's been studied or researched that women are uncomfortable in aggressive environments, or if they're just uncomfortable in environments that are personally aggressive, specifically where they're being threatened, their physical well-being is being threatened, or they're being attacked for their physical appearance, which tends not to happen to men in aggressive environments. Yeah. I, my so I'm just words, wondering, yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering if what you yeah. want to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if what you might want to think about it's an is interesting question. Yeah. rather than the supportive, as in we're going to make things better and different for you, which is an equally unpleasant Can experience, yeah, yeah, or yeah. could be an equally unpleasant yeah. experience. Another way of looking at it is, what if we just look at the types of responses and how they make a difference? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you could study that very easily. You just have new gender neutral names versus non-gender neutral names. I mean, that's happened to me so many times when I forget to use a gender neutral name <laughs> on a site somewhere, the dramatic difference yeah, yeah, in yeah. response from a uh, a gender neutral name and how many times I regret and delete and start over again huh. just because of that. Yeah, I mean when I was when I chose those words I was referring to these are most the studies that I'm thinking of are mostly interview or ethnographic studies of people's experiences as contributors and the reasons their stated reasons for why they stop editing or why they go away from Wikipedia in particular. Like, um, and so, you know, I think in terms of what other ways of studying that, and it sounds like you're employing like an experimental intervention where you change, uh, or based on your own experience, you could even imply an experimental intervention where you're changing names and seeing how that shapes people's well, responses. That's what women writers did in the 18th and 19th century. Yeah. Well, they, they used gender, yeah, and still do, lot still do it. Yeah. use gender neutral names. So it's not as if there isn't a long history Absolutely. of this happening. Yeah, and I think there's some excellent work on looking at bias and discrimination in uh, hiring and workplaces that takes advantage of some of the same strategies. I think it would be a great approach to research. I would love to see somebody. But I, I will on. add that that and the previous question address more, again, those who are already contributing or contributed at least once. The yeah. question yeah, is yeah. more, why didn't they stay? Why didn't they keep doing it? I think <laughs> people who haven't contributed at all and never even got into it, I don't know if they would even that. know that there is that particular type of environment or hostility or whatever it is if they've never actually contributed anything, yeah. right? So is, can that be an explanation of why people don't even start? I'm not sure. Well, could you look at then how, I'm sorry, just, just to yeah. go this way. I mean, people tend to do things that their friends tell them about and say, I had a really good experience doing this. And people tend not to do things that their friends say, that was horrific. That was really an unpleasant situation, and I'll never do that again. I mean, which of those two would you say, hey, sign me up, I'll come along with you next yeah, time? Yeah, and so that, that would be a great thing to ask about. You know, do you have any friends who might, like, to ask these things, but friends? Like, do you or have friends who've done this? Or, or yeah, people yeah. in your network. Yeah, that would, that would be a great thing to ask about. So if we were the, all of us, the Wikimedia Foundation, and you presented this, and we said, okay, what can we do to get more women coming in the first place to be part of their, um, not, and we'll worry about them having them stick around. Um, what are your thoughts on that? That was our <laughs> question for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we, we wanted to ask you the, um, I mean, I think, uh, I, I think a lot of, I mean, you saw, we saw the sort of trends with folks who had received editing as Wikipedia as an assignment, and we saw the cross-tab variation for those variables, right? And you saw how for differences in socioeconomic status or racial groups, you saw the, the distribution becoming flatter in terms of who had edited Wikipedia based on assignments. And I think, you know, it's, it's these are hard questions in any area, right? Not just editing Wikipedia, right? How do you close a wage gap? How do you get more people, you know, to, to get advanced degrees or get higher salaries, right? I mean, um, so I think that there probably are a lot of different things that need to happen. And I think that part of that are these sorts of proactive interventions to reach out and introduce people who might not otherwise find it through their social networks or other mechanisms, right? If, if you're not just going to show up on Wikipedia in the first place, having it happen in a classroom that everybody's, you know, or in a class in a school setting, lots of people go to school, 
Um, uh, I think that could be one really useful way. I, I think, um, and I think that the things that the foundation is doing to try to encourage newcomers to stick around are a big part of that too, because a lot of people have unpleasant experiences with their first edit. Um, and so this is a really active area of research there that I think they need to keep building on. Um, and then lastly, I think, um, you know, if part of the issue here is that there's a different distribution of internet skills across genders. Um, and that could be for complicated reasons, right? We can talk about that. But based on this kind of data set, which is a pretty diverse sample, right? There's a different distribution of internet skills across genders. Um, Got to find a way to get people who are at the lower end of that skill spectrum contributing, right? So lowering those barriers, making it easier. And the foundation's worked on this a lot, and it's a really hard problem. Um, but I think this research illustrates some of the reasons why you can't just solve the gender gap by focusing on gender. You also have to think about it in the context of skill differences, um, because that's an important part of the relationship. So, I pulled this up just because even if we take the people who contributed for school, I mean, the gender differences are especially large, yeah. right? So for some of the other variables, it, they mm -hmm. weren't. But for gender, even then, yeah, they got closer, it's, but it's, still it's not yeah, much closer. Not yeah, much it's closer. not much closer. Yeah, so it's interesting that that, in and of itself, is definitely not going to solve that issue. Um, I mean, I, I think, part, as we said, I think one of the really big questions is, why is it that the women and there are not a lot of women who, who will self-report a high skill, but <coughs> those who do, why are they so much less likely to be contributing? What's going on there? Yeah. So if we do control for just if, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've thought a lot about this. What would be the next study? And qualitatively, right? What, what are the things you would want to be asking if you controlled for skill and only looked at high-skilled people, right? Interview a bunch of high-skilled, both men and women. And what is it that you could ask? And it, I don't think the question is necessarily should be about Wikipedia, right? I think there's a larger issue because, again, the internet skill measure is not about Wikipedia either. So there's something larger going on. Yeah. Yes? Do you have any sense of trust in Wikipedia content in the study? Not trust in the content. There's confidence in editing, but not trust in the content. Because it seems to me that people's relationship to Wikipedia yeah, or relationship to that it. online content. Well, but again, the internet skill measure there. is not about that at all. Yeah. It's, it has nothing to do with the Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The other thing yeah, that I... Oh, oh Joanna, sorry. in the back. But if you want to follow up I was going to jump in on this line of question, too, and then we can go to the back. Sorry. Um, which was just that uh, the other thing goes back to this question that Justin asked and this idea of you know other systems and other environments online where women are more active and contributing more. I think understanding what's going on there that's different from what's going on in Wikipedia is a really critical line of work. And so, um, you know, there's some, I, I think, continuing to investigate the possible lines of explanation here and try to narrow it down a little bit more. So another area could be, it might be that there's something about encyclopedia writing. Right? There could be something about this task that's not appealing to women on average for some reason. Um, and so it could be driving self-selection into the task as well. Um, and again, I don't know, right? I don't think there's a lot of great research on this, but. Right, if you go on a system like Etsy, there are a lot more women participating on Etsy than that. So actually, so. There's, there is another angle of the, the gender variable when it comes to the different types of contributions that I've looked at. That Usually, there seems to be a relationship of the more public it is, the less likely the women to be there. So if it's certainly we know that computer media communication types of things, women are more likely to do that. And that, whether it's chatting or emailing with your friends, if it's just your friends, or if it's just a fairly private domain, the women are out, the women are there. They are very active, but it, the more public it is, the sort of almost bigger the stakes in some ways, the less likely that women are doing it. And so I do think it's it's that plays into larger societal issues of gender inequality again in terms of whose voices matter and why women. I mean, but then some of it is back onto why is it that women feel that their voices might not be welcomed in these spaces. Kind of back to that. Research on uh, education outcomes in Oxford that has interesting things around declarative writing or the style of writing for mm -hmm. essays and making statements where it sees a gender gap because of backgrounds and um, ways people have been mm -hmm. educated to write that may tie into a Wikipedia context specifically. Mm -hmm. So there might be stuff in the offline world mm -hmm. that's quite instructive about gender gaps in um, certain forms of examination of content mm -hmm. if that's what content's being assessed on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you how do you build a more egalitarian participatory encyclopedia in a sexist, gender divided 
world yeah. is yeah. part of this question that I think is really hard. So, Joanna, sorry. 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 For a while. so um, I, I just wanted to add about our workshop. Uh, we started with a seed grant last year from the Future of Information Alliance at the University of Maryland. So it was a small project. We only had 40 girls, but across four different schools. <coughs> and we had some research that indicated that girls tend to kind of fall off the technology curve in general very early in their education. So it's somewhere around fifth grade that girls kind of decide that, oh, this whole geeky technology stuff, it's maybe not for me. So that's why we thought we should intervene at that precise moment. And one of the interesting things we found when we started the workshop, which was just 10 weeks, you know, 10 hours basically of teaching them how to edit a wiki site, um, was that we made this survey. And in the survey, we found that they do have high internet skills. I'm not sure we use similar measures to yours, but you know, in general, like they know how to find things, they know how to, you know, find a YouTube video, they know how to do everything. You do a Google search, um, but they have this vision of the internet as something that's really mostly a networking tool and communicating with friends and, uh, you know, kind of finding information. But they didn't see at all, almost at all, the potential of the internet to be you know, something where you can produce knowledge. Like, we made them make these Google yeah. graphs, you know, based on Google Trends. Um, and we made them, you know, embed a video in an article. And these kinds of skills where you produce new knowledge using what, what's out there online, and where you share that knowledge, these were really alien to them. And that was kind of interesting. And I think it has to do a lot with, you know, women not being as likely as men to perceive themselves as experts. And I think that goes along with what you were saying that, you know, when it's content that is to be shared in really a large public uh, space or sphere, uh, women tend to doubt themselves more. Um, so, so I really, I really am happy to see that you think that, um, you know, these school assignments might make a difference, even if it doesn't make such a big difference in the gender gap. Um, but anyway, I brought some propaganda, so I'm just going <laughs> to circulate it. Take a look. This is actually a sheet we made for teachers or and you know parents who might be interested in doing the workshop themselves. We have a full curriculum that's downloadable online, and and people can just go and run with it. And um, you know we're not teaching it ourselves anymore because there's only two of us left in the team, and we have you know our dissertations to write and everything. So, but it exists. So um, so please take a look. Thanks so much. Thank you for sharing. Did you have a hand? Yeah, it, um, that ties in very much to the idea of women not seeing themselves, in, being socialized to not see themselves as uh, having agency in the construction of reality itself, but rather contributing components to it at times, or filling up space sometimes, um, not building the space itself. Um, and most of what Wikipedia is uh, is talked about as is that construction and that dissemination of reality. Um, and so even just the language of itself is, is something that is. Yeah, there could be framing effects in that way, yeah. how the project is framed. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I, I haven't seen work that addresses that particular dynamic in the context of Wikipedia, but it would be an interesting. Yeah, just a more general question about how to frame projects that are you know, user-generated participatory online projects in a way that could attract <laughs> broader groups of people. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Have you thought about what would be a yeah. research design that would get at that? Or anyone else? I, I, yeah. I would be interested to see how just language around Wiki, Wikipedia itself as not a, as a more a uh, collaborative space is a more uh, a space that you contribute to rather than something that so ambitiously builds a new knowledge. manifestation of society, which is inspiring but also the intimidating. And so, it, yeah. And to be fair, I mean, I so a lot of research I've done is about information seeking, not necessarily content production. And one of the studies we did, which was a lot of sitting with people and talking to them about looking for content, again, not Wikipedia specific, but definitely mentions of Wikipedia, and you'd have quotes where people would say, oh yeah, Wikipedia is where they hire editors to edit these, I mean, if people yeah. think that that's how it works, then of course they're not going to be sitting down thinking that they can contribute. So there's a lot of confusion out there among some people about how Wikipedia works, and there are definitely people out there who don't understand that you can edit it. So even if even those who know that in theory you could edit it, many have absolutely no idea that there's the edit button, and they don't get that. But 
there are actually lots of people who don't even understand that you can just go and edit it. Yep. So that's like this very core level of misunderstanding. Mega. Um, yeah, so y you made a big deal in your presentation a couple times, a little, a little deal, about the longitudinal data, of the longitudinal nature of these data. But um, presumably, internet skills three years ago are pretty correlated with internet skills uh, yeah. now. Um, They're like perfectly correlated. It's like right. crazy. I have a graph. I'm sure. Look I mean, that was my that was my that was my assumption. Um, I didn't want to be too presumptive. Uh, yeah, that's right. They're not perfectly, but they're close. Um, Go ahead. So what are you? So what do we gain then from the longitudinal nature of the data if they're the same measured in both places? Well, I think it because you wouldn't believe the number of people who tell me, oh, but everyone will improve their skills in three years. I mean that I mean, that's right. one of the reasons I have to collect data on this. I mean I've felt right, so like I've had to because yeah, people's it, reaction is, is, well, this is just momentarily. I mean, you study the internet, so you know that certain things don't change that much. But they, you would not believe how many people, when I present material, will say, We're "Oh, doing. next year this will be completely different." I see. So maybe I mean. So I mean, no, I understand the value of longitudinal data yeah, in general. It, I don't um, think I don't uh, think we've really taken uh, advantage <laughs> of the sort of longitudinal possibilities. No, I think it's super exciting to have longitudinal data on right. internet use. But I think um, that's the like. But like yeah. because that you have the one variable in here both ways, I just feel like this like. I mean, maybe what maybe what's missing here is that is that you can maybe what's missing here is that in the talk or what I was missing was like a sentence which said, and in fact, if we use today's measure of internet skills, the Doesn't results matter. are exactly the same. It is the um, same, uh, yeah. which suggests that okay. All right. Yeah, it's in the paper. There's a but so here's here is, here is yeah. like this amazing graph. To me, it's amazing. I actually thought, wow, I must have gotten something wrong in the numbers. <laughs> like how could it be so perfectly right? So this is how people because this is specifically SES and the relationship to skill. Right? Like, yeah, everyone up. is improving some, but they're pretty much improving at the same rate, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, one other kind of thing that I was thinking about is that I, I, I hear skill in, in, in this talk, and I, yeah. I'm thinking about, like, skill as a, uh, I don't know, maybe this is just because of the, the nature of the word, but I'm thinking, like, this is something that it's key. People aren't editing Wikipedia because they don't know something which would allow them, like, they, would, they don't have the skills to edit Wikipedia or something like that, right? But it seems like the argument you're making is more nuanced because, of course, these students yeah. are editing it when they're given it as an assignment for a class, right? Um, so, so um, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of a – there's a little – like, skills represents maybe something a little different than what I would – I don't know, what I think about when I – No, it really is. And partly, I'm, I think our way to try to emphasize that is that it's not Wikipedia skills. That's not what we measured. The skill variable is not about Wikipedia things. Right. Yeah, it's about understanding all sorts of Internet-related items. Right. Has nothing to do in some ways with Wikipedia. Right. So like it's more one of like the twenty-seven words is wiki, but that's I not. See. I mean, that's so it's a, as much about familiarity or it's a lot about awareness and understanding. Sort of like general yep. like knowledge. Do you okay. know what so, HTTPS is? Right. Right. That kind of question is a good example of one that really differentiates. So like basic basic knowledge, knowledge about how the internet works is how I should be thinking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Level, like, yeah it's sort of as opposed to like. And I think the fact that it's basic knowledge and that that basic knowledge, what I just demonstrated in the other work, is that that basic knowledge really taught, really correlates quite closely with your ability, your actual abilities, right? So the questions that are measuring skills are these sorts of like, how much do you know about something? But that the relationship between those questions and what people are actually able to do when they sit down in her lab and are given an assignment like find me information about this on the internet is really closely tied. So the behavior and the and the knowledge are tied really well. Um, so yeah. Well, I mean, because part of the suggest some of the suggestions that you've even made today are things like make it easier to contribute, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, it, I mean, it seems like maybe the argument would be something like make it more familiar to people without like like make it rely less on I don't know like metaphors Fancy which stuff. are yeah. or like knowledge of particular technology right which is which is a particular way in which people might make things easier that's true. right and so that's where sort of unpacking that um un unpacking exactly what we mean by skills here in a way that i know you've done um in this body of work um but m might help might help draw more uh, clear and actionable solutions for the people trying to people in the wikimedia foundation who desperately want to fix right i mean i do think it's that prior step of if you go to the page knowing that I know I can edit this because I've been told it's easy to edit right. this, I can edit this, let me see how to do that. I think then, let's set aside creating a new entry, which I think truly is not, not that easy. simple. <laughs> I mean, that anyone who says that's easy has not actually read up on how to do it. Um, but to edit, like, 
you want to fix the typo, OK? That really is very easy if you know that that's something that can be done. And if you sit down there knowing, oh, I can, anyway, people fix typos all the time. How do I do it? And you look at, oh, there's the edit. It says edit. Maybe I can click that. But that's a type of attitude and approach to the web. And I think that's that initial step. And that's why I think it's a more general internet skill. You sit down with a different attitude. That's something you can actually do. And that actually, I mean, I think this is a type of skill that's, that's generalizable beyond the web, right? I mean, it's the same thing when I talk to a graduate student about their project and I, I see the numbers as things that you can manipulate in a stats program or even on a simple spreadsheet and they don't see that. Like, it's, it's a type of approach to ma material in front of you that you know what's possible. How do we get people to know what's possible? You've had your hand up yeah, a little bit. I just, I wanted to follow up on your question of how can we, how can we follow this up and get more women in. And, you know, my thoughts are, what about looking at, you know, doing a, qua a qualitative study on the women who are actually doing the editing and find out what factors there are that really got them into it and, you know, what their, what their experience is once they're up <coughs> and, you know, use, use them as a resource to, um, so my concern about talking to people who are already contributing is that whatever t they tell you the reason is, you don't know if those who aren't contributing are similar women, actually. Because if you're not interviewing in parallel non-users, then you cannot claim differences among them. So <coughs> while, yes, we can learn certain things from the contributors, if you don't have a parallel data collection going on from the non-contributors, you might come away with things that, in fact, if you asked a non-contributor, they'd have the same thing, but they just haven't sat down to do it. But I think those, they, to, to get at what the distinction is between the two groups, um, you know, the contributors and the non-contributors, I mean, it's like, is there a factor that would turn non-contributors into contributors? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's the big question. And I think, I think there is, there, part of the way I would respond, too, is that there is really great work that's tried trying to do some of what you discussed. And I think, uh, you know, again, this is the work of folks out at Group Lens and some other folks at the University of Washington um, and at the foundation itself have tried to investigate this more in depth. And I think that, you know, they've they've made some findings about what women who are contributing actively say different, like their experience has been about and what differentiates them. But I think Esther's point is that you you, you need, exactly part of what you said is that you need that comparison across the two groups. And so I think that's the key for, to for moving it forward. So I think I agree yeah. really closely. Um, I'm noticing that we're basically at 1.45. One more, question. One more one so one anybody's question. got one? Or I know that we'll also be sticking around and you can come and talk to us or find us online. Both pretty easy to find online. Uh, if you have the skills to yeah, do Yeah, if so. you have the skills. If you don't have the skills, just come say hi. That works too. Um, so yeah, thank you all. Yeah, yeah.